Welcome to a Celtic State of Mind. I'm Paul John Dykes and I'm joined this evening by Kevin Graham and uh, James making your European debut on a Celtic State of Mind. Second half performance, Kevin, was it an improvement on the first? My head is absolutely burning. I didn't ken what to make of this performance. I really don't. It's almost like um, the patient sh- showed signs of life, doctor, but he still died. He still died. He made a great fight yet, but eventually he still the patient was still pronounced dead at the scene. Um, the, the, the setting half, we had an energy with Christie. Oh, Jesus, Tom Rogic. That was that was like a that was a the rocket jewel. Uh, that was a, a f- glimpses of a oh. fantastic rocket there. But what are we doing at the back? What is dreadfully poor at the back? And no, let's let's, let's, let's actually just put this out here. Mm. What's Shane Duffy doing at uh. the back? Oh, he was poor. He was and, poor on Saturday. He got well. exposed for all three goals. You see the last one, James. You know, we were looking at the, the midfield play, obviously you were mm. criticising in Chamble, but by the way, I thought in Chamble ah, well tonight overall. Um, but that ball, it's a basic pass defensively and he mm. doesn't defend it. He lets the boy get behind him, he then lets him get in front of him and it's just a lunge. It's a desperate lunge. There was a moment, five minutes earlier, where he put his toe through the ball and just went up in the air. Mm. Now that undoes the work that we've seen, Kevin, from a revitalised Tommy Rogic coming off that bench and rolling back the years almost. El Yanusi coming back into the game. Ryan Christie being the creative force that we know he can be. And it's just undone. We're, we're actually chasing a 2-2. We're chasing a 2-2 mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. the scoreline uh, looks far more convincing. I think in the second half, you know, in the first half, AC Milan were uh, more than worthy of a 2 nothing lead. But in the second half, yes, they've taken off some of their players like Zlatan, um, it's almost like they're just going to protect that 2 nothing lead. We get a cracking goal and we're chasing a 2-2. Is there enough being done in that second half so that when we're looking um, at the momentum on Sunday, Kevin, for us to, I think, make a few changes and go in with a bit of confidence against Aberdeen? I don't know if there's been enough being done. We still look... Uh, we don't look organised. We seem to be relying on individuals... Um, James made a great comment at 84 minutes when we played a, played a couple of great wee passes round about the box and he went, that's pure Lenny ball. <laughs> and I says, well, the first time I've ever heard anything called Lenny ball. Um, we seem to be all at sea. We're having decent individual performances, but we didn't seem to be having a coherent performance uh, all across, the, all across the, the field. Um, there's something dreadfully lacking in that team. And it's organisation, it seems to be a purpose, it seems to be a poise. There's potential on that side, but we have got, we have got players with potential. You look, everything positive in that second half mm. came through Ryan Christie. Yes. Everything positive mm. whatsoever. And it goes back to what we were saying before the game started. Ryan Christie had to be in that side. Mm. But... I think, see, like, we chased Shane Duffy. I, I, like, I likened... Mm, he's a likeable cha- guy. I likened a chase for Shane Duffy, me being locked in a cupboard. And he was held up to be the saviour. Mm. And the what we were getting told about, a no-nonsense centre-half. Oh, he's Irish Daniel Mastorovich, ain't he? Kevin, uh, a that, no-nonsense that, centre-half for me is someone that clears his lines and, and we're not even getting that right. And that's the basics of defending. Aye. Someone who clears his lines and he's not getting that right. I mean, for a ball to go in in the last minute, two or three minutes into uh, injury time, he's not only the wrong side of him, he's nowhere near the boy. It's a, just a desperate lunge. If he's not getting the ball, he's bringing him down. Now, Barkas has been criticised, <coughs> rightly or wrongly, but what is Duffy doing for him? He's certainly not Aye. protecting him. Now, Ayer, people criticise Ayer. Ayer had a good game tonight. Mm-hmm. Ayer had a good game. Uh, you mentioned uh, Christie. Now, when you're looking at the second half, I've got seven moments where Christie has been involved in creative play. Yeah, it doesn't always come off, but it's Christie that, that plays the ball um, to El Yunusi for the goal. I, 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 know, I know, and it's a it's great cross. It's always through Christie. It's a great cross, but then you get the, the frustrating thing is, 
you get two free kicks in the last couple of minutes there, uh-huh. and he hits the first man uh-huh. the ball for them. Eh? And let's let's be honest, we didn't cut AC Milan open a couple of times. Eh? We didn't cut AC Milan open. We had a couple of half chances, shots uh-huh. at the edge of the box, shots across the bar, and that we've got to use set plays. We've got uh-huh. height to use set plays. We scored from a set play, mm. and when you see set plays hitting the first man going behind men, and that it's just really really frustrating. I'm really caught here between the small positives we got mm. and the fact that the second half was maybe caused by AC Milan just dropping down a couple of years. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, like... You're saying the small positives, Kevin. I'm what were the positives? I'm conflicted with what I, what I can actually say about this game. What were the positives that we can take into Petorgi on Sunday? Christy, the energy, lacks salt, Aietes... Looks really, the really good. Are the, the, the resurgence of are, are Rogic. Ayer solid. Ayer played well, but it's a completely different mm. game going to Pataudre, and that dressing room will be down. That dressing room will be down going in there. Uh, I think that goal, mm. the sucker punch goal at the end mm. there, will maybe undo all the good work that was done in the, the second half. You're looking for positives because obviously Lennon has to pick the team up for Sunday's performance uh, up at Pataudre. We started the game with three at the back. Did it work? No, definitely not. No, they, they, they got exposed too many times. They they gotten behind far too many times. Teo Hernandez got in what three or four times in that first half, and then Duffy exposed right at the end there. Yeah. Does the does the three at the back only work when Yuli ends there? When we've potentially got that, Tony uh, Curran made that point at half time. I think it only works when we're against a weaker opposition, like in domestic football, because against Rangers. They've exposed us, and AC Man have exposed us massively, I think. Yeah. I think the problem is, well, you saw it in the second half, that a couple of times Frank Pong was caught out defensively uh, when he was playing as a right back. a good few slap and, passes. And we're missing... Tonight, if El Hamed is fit, and there's no point about the players missing, but we've got to mention the players missing. Mm. We have got to mention the players missing. El Hamed's playing right back tonight in uh, that game, and he's given us that uh, more a defensive option. I love wee Frank Pong, I love him going he's forward and that. Guy, but but th- th- we have a problem the way where he fit him in that team. We really do. I was maybe a bit hard on him when he burst in, when he took the ball back past Fernandez in about the 83rd, 84th minute there, and he hit the first guy with the ball. And he gave us a you can see him, he was raging with himself after, and you see Lennon. Show that was him the type of chance emotion. against Riga. He Aye. played the perfect he pass. He played the perfect pass. Yeah, and that, there's the opportunity for 2 2. And then obviously five minutes later, we're 3-1 down, as you see, the sucker punch. Let's have a wee look at some of the comments coming through. We didn't have a chance at halftime to go through many of them, but uh, I could tell just by looking at a cross-section of them that most Celtic fans were uh, very disappointed with the first-half performance. Joe Porter, who joins us on a regular basis on the broadcast, and you're watching via YouTube, much better second-half performance against a great team. Do you think Milan are a great team? I mean, as you were saying beforehand, 20 games unbeaten. Ah, they've only conceded one goal in Serie A this season, and they've scored nine goals in their four games, so they're a solid team. So, I think we've done decently that second half. They did take some of the stars off, like Zlatan. They replaced them with like, suitable replacements like Leal, but I think we performed well. Mm-hmm. You've got to have a look at the three subs that the Bramon all played at the weekend. Mm. When they made that, mm. when they made the two quick changes, there's no brought on nobody. They've brought on nobody. They've brought on, they're, they're brought on first. Aye, they're, they're 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 brought on first team players. Mm-hmm. So it's not as if it was a draw them, a mm. draw them a standard. But I do think there was maybe an Italian mentality there where they're two nothing up. They know that the game's won. Mm. They do know that the game's won at two nothing, and they're trying to manage the game out. Whereas other teams that maybe weren't Italian would have tried to go mm. for the juggler in that second half. Maybe. And maybe this, this is where mm. I'm a wee bit conflicted with how, I, how I'm not ranting and raving about the second half mm. performance and how I'm only seeing it as small positives, but no the big positive that I was looking for at the start of the night. They defended really well. You'd expect that for an Italian team. Uh, Simon Kier headed away pretty much all the crosses. Ryan Christie about three or four corners and three kicks that got headed away. Well, t- to pick up on that point, James, I mean... Kevin, you said earlier about the, the aerial uh, threat of Celtic. What is that? Because I look at that, um, you know, a free kick getting lined up and you can see Shane Duffy and Chris Ayer and, and obviously they're getting in a position so that Duffy can attack it. I've never seen Ayer scoring a header. Ah, I was going to make a point of that. You know, yeah. for the height of him. He is not a threat. 
He's not a threat at a corner kick. He's not a threat at a set piece. Yes, yeah, Shane Duffy scored a couple of goals. Julian as well, but he's Julian. not there. Yeah, Julian's a massive miss at the moment. And it's not that situation, you know, like a player, Kevin, who like Bobo Baldo, who disappears for the side and all of a sudden he becomes the messiah. Chris Julian is a huge miss in the centre of that defence. There's a lot of criticism coming in on Duffy. So let's have a look at, at some of the, the comments coming through as well. Now, Kay Mullen on YouTube reckons that we were not that good defensively, but overall much better than the Rangers game. Well, I think certainly in the second half, we did get some positivity. Kevin, I think you are. If you if you were to analyse it again, you're maybe being swayed by that sucker punch. You know, the second half, one each against AC Milan. Obviously, the game seemed to be lost in the first half, but they gave us that glimmer of hope. And, you know, when you've got that chance there that Frimpong... I mean, he played the wrong ball, didn't he? You know, he gets a nosebleed, doesn't he, at that point. He played it perfectly against Riga. But on, on tonight's uh, showing, he's still got a lot of work to do with his distribution. I, I think we do have a problem with Frank Pong, just as I said. Mm. He should be maybe challenging <clears throat> James Forrest for that right-hand side mm. attacking role. But then the coaching staff are going to need to work on work uh-huh. with him to make him that player. He, he, he's, he, he's not a right-back. I think we just need to give up on him as a right back. He makes some good recovery, recovering runs, I think. But that comes from his own errors. Aye. I think it's his pace that lets him make the good recovering runs. But I didn't understand how he was scared to take on Born, a half fit Borna Barisic against Rangers. But tonight, uh, Teo Hernandez, a far superior left back to Borna Barisic, and he skinned him alive like, two he, times in the first half, times. and then right at the end there, but the final ball was just lacking. Here's a, here's a point as well in relation to Scott Brown because I wanted to speak about Brown uh, and uh, the fact that he came off and it was the right substitution. Mm-hmm. James, we spoke about it seconds before it happened. Sean, you're commenting on YouTube and for everybody who is tuning in tuning <coughs> into the, the bulletin on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe uh, to our channel and uh, everything that we do is free of charge and we do multiple daily broadcasts but we played with far more fluency when Scott Brown went off. Now, Kevin, what was your thoughts overall? I thought he was fairly anonymous. I have to agree with you there, and I have to agree with the the, the comment there that that we did play with far more fluency when he wasn't there. Um, What Scott Brown brings to the team is probably more mentally than physically now. Mm. Uh, More more mentally. Mm. But when you look at that, would we need Scott Brown at Pataudry? When we're going to have a lot of the ball at Pataudry on Saturday, eh, Sunday, will we need Scott Brown? Would we be better with a more fluid midfield where we're going to keep the ball, we're going to be dynamic on the ball? I think you've got to say, based on what we've seen Uh in the last two games, you've got to say yes. But then it wasn't that long ago that we had to bring him on against St Johnson to actually give the Uh team an absolute kick up the arse. I think it's to be expected though when you take off a defensive player in Scott Brown and bring on two sort of more attacking creative midfielders and Tom Rowlich and Brian Christie we're obviously going to make more chances that's just easy to see well, I, I think we need to match the energy of our opponents in the middle of the park and that's something that's been missing in all the performances this season mm. and it wasn't until during that second mm. half there that we got a bit of energy in the middle of the mm. park and it's maybe a simple cause it's maybe a simple an obvious solution, that it, uh, an, uh, an obvious answer that it came with Scott Brown going off. Let's look at some of the substitutions, Kevin, looking ahead to the Aberdeen game. I'm going to focus on Christie as well and his contribution in the second half, uh, which largely was positive and a take on board that, yes, there was a couple of set pieces that uh, didn't get to the destination. But Scott Brown comes off in 63 minutes for Rogic. You mentioned Rogic. You've given him some credit for his performance tonight. Uh, Welsh comes off for El Yanusi, he scores us the goal. Griff comes off for Christie, he's our most creative player in the second half. There's three positive substitutions, mm-hmm. I think you will agree. How many of them keep their jersey for Sunday? All of them. Uh, All three? All three of them. To the, to the loss of the three players that they've, they've taken uh, off tonight, or? Yes. So Scott Brown is dropped for Sunday? Aye, uh, I would. You know, this this I'm, is the I'm, this I'm, is a question. I'm trying to get into Neil Lennon's head, but for what me, what would you do? I would have to have a look at what was our best twenty minutes in the last 120 minutes that we've played. Yep. And the best twenty minutes we've played were without Scott Brown. You take away that that sucker punch goal. Mm-hmm. That last half hour was very promising, if yes. you ask me. 
Aye. Um, and it was played without Scott Brown on the park. So there's there's something to consider. And would it be McGregor and Cham, Rogic and then Christie playing for the right? And would we switch to the four two three one? Well, when you, when you see, Christy, we, we were speaking as well, James, in the first half about how we approached it with, uh, you know, Encham and Frimpong, we're doubling up. Mm. McGregor and Luxalt, we're doubling up. And I want to talk about Luxalt's performance as well. Now, if, for example, Christy comes into the equation, you see him doing that with the two wide men. Either side, mm. he crosses back and forth. He's got the energy to do it, Christy, isn't he? Um, so I think that when you're looking at Brown, it sounds like a, a bit of a bombshell when you're dropping your captain. But is that the answer? Does, do we need to actually do something drastic to try and get a, a coherence back into the side? Well, the to two, get an identity back into the side? The two players, Kev, tonight, on tonight's show and, and Saturday, Brown and Duffy. Mm. Two guys that you think you can hang your, your hopes on. Two captains. One captain at the two back, leaders. one in midfield. Mm-hmm. Two leaders. And they're, they're doing mm. the basics wrong. I mean, that goal there... Um, Duffy. It, yeah, I Duffy, and, and then you can go back to Saturday, you know. And, and the thing, the thing with that sucker punch goal, Kevin, basic defending. That's an international player. Basic defending. The boys behind him. The boys go side him. It's no good enough. He, he basically, he, he basically loses the guy. Mm. Plays the guy on. And he's, he's not got the then, pace. Then, to, then it's mm. like he's turned and round, and he's in complete and utter panic. The minute you see that ball going through, Kevin. And where Duffy's position is, you, you know, was was you know he's not going to get in between the player and Barkas. You just know no. it. He doesn't have the pace. It takes an age for him to turn round. Is he so fit? That's like watching a tractor in uh, defence. Yeah. Is he even fit? He doesn't look fit. <laughs> oh, he did pick up the knock, the shoulder injury in the first half, and then he's holding his what was it? His shin in mm-hmm. the second half. It's I don't understand. He ran into McGregor for the second goal, and he's tackled. He's actually tackled Barkas. He has that, he's actually really? nearly injured Barkas, Barkas is in, injured. And there we go, we're sitting here with another night And I couldn't ah. tell you if Barkas had a decent shot stopper or not Because he didn't have a, mm. he didn't have a safety make It's because no. the, the, the teams have been too clinical They're getting limited chances and they're scoring them and Sean you, it's, Ross There's no, no chances that And you even have a look at the goals that we lost tonight You couldn't mm. say ah. Fraser Foster would have saved it ah, the, the, only, so that's, uh, the only sort of questionable Barkas goal he's conceded I would say is the Rangers first goal the golden header that he's got a touch there, but it's gone right through his hands. I think there's, you know, the thing with the goalkeeper, yes, there's a couple of occasions where you think you could question him about the Rangers goal, you could question him about Ferris Faro's second goal. I, say that I think I think there's there's other areas of the pitch that we need to look at, and I think Scott Brown's one of them. Mm. You look at the last half hour of tonight's game, there was, a, there was actually a belief in this room that we might get the 2-2. And a massive part of that was Brown comes off and there's more creativity, there's more drive, the tempo increases. Simple balls into your defence are not being dealt with by Shane Duffy, who's meant to be this uh, messiah that came in and, and made everyone better. Premier League goal scoring centre, but... Yeah, he scored a couple of goals and I, I've seen mo- nothing else in the last two games um, that would suggest that he's a first pick. Is, is it the general organisation of the team, though, mm. that we're just no defending well as a unit? Oh, it's a back three consistently. Shane Duffy has just came in on loan. Stephen Welsh, who's only played, before that Rangers game, one game for Celtic. And then Christopher, they've not played together that often, so is it really a surprise that they're not looking that organised? It seems like a bit of thrown together back three because of the players missing. Yes, with, it, a, with a new goalkeeper behind yeah. them as well, James. Mm. You know, Sean Ross uh, on YouTube, much better than second half. Got to keep the head back four from now on and um, we've also got a comment asking the panel Michael the boy uh, via Twitter does the panel feel Sunday is a massive game for Lenny 100% 100% I don't, I don't think we can two, argue two big glosses in a row one of them are absolutely shocking performance gutless against Rangers um, a loss here which we played decently in spells but still a loss nonetheless I think Sunday is probably the first time in a number of years where we can actually say now that this league is not ours mm. to lose, that we need to go and attack it and win it. We need to go and attack and win this league. Now, but a league to win, no to lose. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Tony Curran makes the point that uh, Christy Luxalt, Roderick Frimpong played well. Let's talk about Luxalt. I was disappointed when he came off. Mm. I thought he'd done really well. Uh, what was your thoughts overall? Well, I thought Luxalt, when he was doubling up with, was it McGregor on that flank? And he was taking the boys. And I did think, I made a point that his crosses against Rangers and in this game they were kind of lacking. 
But when he was taking his man on, he was getting stuck in, winning the ball back. And that's what you expect quality for a player who's been World Cup team in a tournament. He's what was it, £13 million pound man paid for him. He's coming for a top team. You expect that's quality, and he's brought it, I think. Definitely. When you have a look tonight, and I can have mentioned a few a, a few Celtic players who did play well, but you could actually maybe see that Lax Salt had played at a higher level in a lot of the mm. Celtic team you alongside him. You could actually tell. See what he was at times. Them at times. And as I say, he's in the first half mm. and at half time as well. I'm actually sitting here disappointed that we haven't got a, mm. a buying clause for him because I think he's going to be a sensation for us. Is, and he's just got that drive, he's got that energy, he's got that enthusiasm. I think the team's been looking as if we lacked enthusiasm and soul. He's got a great strength about him, uh, Kevin. And, and, and he seems mm. to have that. Mm-hmm. And the players that came on the night maybe just showed mere heart, mere soul, and mere enthusiasm. And Cham, I think. The only thing we've sort of mentioned about in Cham is a negative for the third goal, but I'd like, I think tonight he didn't look disinterested. I thought. He was getting stuck in. He played some brilliant passes. Some of the cross he, he field showed, passes, James. Uh, he showed enthusiasm and sort of dignity and like proper gone for them with no skin ages, if you're in But, but the, the, this, the, I'll, I'll look at the negative to that. It's, it's a big game against AC Milan. Mm. There's going to be p- teams watching that for mm. Europe. He's just panicked. Why he's, he's, he's pretty selling the show one day. If it was uh, against Halanakis, would uh, they play like that? Probably no. We've got mm. to say that the evidence that we've got would probably say he wouldn't have played like that if we were playing Hamilton Ackies nah. in, 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 in a league game. Mm. But that's how he's so frustrating. Well, the question that, is, that, that the, is, the question is, so Kevin, uh, before the game, after his performance against Rangers, there's a question mark over oh, whether or not he should have started. I think I agree with James in that the performance based on tonight... He's a starter for Sunday. Polar opposite. Uh, it's a polar opposite. Game. You can't drop. But it's just one. It's just so frustrating that he's so inconsistent. If if we're having a look to see the period of the game when we were the best, when we played well, mm. then you're going well. He's in the midfield. Mm. He was in that middle of the uh-huh. park. So uh, it's a really difficult. I, I can see why Lennon's looking lost. My head's swirling, and I've uh-huh. got no football brain in my head. Mm. Uh, but I'm, uh, but there's so many options, there's so many questions. Does he? Uh, he doesn't know he's he's best uh, eleven. There just doesn't he seem uh, to be a simple solution to our problem. He hasn't known he's best eleven all season because there's the jokes on Twitter about him picking the names out of the hat, the Lennon Lotto. He didn't care what team's going to come out next. It's you didn't know he which didn't one you're going to get via WhatsApp either. Now Paul Bosas <laughs> via Facebook. Welcome back, Paul. Christie would be a lot better if he took the free kicks off him. Listen, it's not a bad point. I know. Sometimes it highlights mm. um, a bad performance, but he, let's have a look at his second half performance. 55 minutes, Christy, he tries a speculative effort, but we're crying out for an effort at that point. Okay, then. No shots on target at that point. 60, yeah, 63 minutes in, another shot for 40 yards. Um, and then on 67 minutes, he wins a free kick, 20 to 25 yards out, 67 minutes. Um, and then he flights it in. When it comes to the actual uh, goal, there's a cross to Ayeti, which creates a chance on 71. And then on 75, it's across to El Yunusi for a goal. Uh, the one two with Frimpong that you know created another chance on 79 minutes where Frimpong should have done better. It's all channeled through Ryan Christie. And I think sometimes, like Paul says, he takes so many bad corners, so many bad free kicks that people think he's had a bad performance a bad because the errors stay in your mind. But when you look at the positives, mm. Ryan Christie was the most positive player like on that part for Celtic. With Rogic as well. Somebody the flicks and tricks, the crowd would be up off their feet if there was 60,000 in there at Celtic Park. Uh, if, I'm going to go back to the points that I made. If there was a crowd in that stadium tonight, I think we're sitting here with a two-each draw. I don't know. Like, I, yeah. think, I think we're sitting here with a two-each draw. I, I, I really do. I think the players would get too committed to going forward and end up getting caught out. Well, there was nobody there and ended up getting caught out. Mm. So, uh, so, I, I, so I, 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 I think we would have, I think we would have been sitting here with a two each drop if there would have been a crowd in there the night. There, there is a point, and I think you made it yourself, Kevin, in the second half. We're getting a point in from Facebook saying that we always get a sucker punch at the end, and they feel that Milan dropped down the gear. Uh, to be honest, so you're talking about a two-two. I do agree with what you said in the second half. Milan had it in them to pick it up a gear as well. Definitely. Mm. So Celtic might have been driven on by the the capacity of home crowd but I think Milan for, for a spell played um, within themselves didn't they they'd done a natural Italian thing they were going to manage the game mm. out they've got a big game against Roma at the weekend they, they had an eye on that they, they know that they took their chances in the first half so they could just 
Best important players, Kessie, Ibrahimovic in the second half. They know, they, they know they're a better team than Celtic. Ah. And sometimes they get caught out with that. But I, I, come on, I'm trying to be a wee bit positive here. I think if, if, if we were in the ground tonight, we would, we would be walking away with a two each draw. I'd love to think about that that would be the case. I was just hoping we would get the 2 2 tonight just to give us that momentum again, Kevin. Let's look ahead to Sunday. Uh, and what do we do? What do we do with this team? We do have loads of options. Um, I would hope that Ryan Christie is a starter for a kickoff. Uh, tell me how you think we're going to line up, Kevin. At, at this precise moment in time, it's probably difficult to see past the team that we finished with, apart from Kamala. Uh, you'd probably see Ayeti up front instead, like instead of Kamala. Would be on. Mm. I, I think Lennon suddenly off shows that he trusts oh. Iron Duffy as... With all these players injured and stuff, that Iron Duffy would be a centre back partnership. I wonder if the wee, when you saw Lennon and Gavin Stratton looking at the laptop, ah. I wonder if that was the moment they decided to move back to a back four because they seem to be talking about. Did we start with a back four on Sunday? We, we should. Is Lennon going to do it though? Uh, he seemed to have learned from his mistake at half time. We talk about Lennon being stubborn, but uh, well, he, made, he made the change. It was a bit too late because it was at half time. The change should have been made before the game. We should, been, we should have started out with a four at the back. We made the change at half time. Do we, do we need to give him credit that he actually went to a back four? Like, that, that they actually realised the problem the and went, they went to a credit, back four. But the, that change should have been made for the start. We should have came out with a four at the back. I, I, I've had my problems with the back three anyway. and I, I didn't think it was a panacea that everybody says it was going to be because... I don't know how I, it ended up so bad because we I, were scoring goals for fun. Edward and Griffiths linking up brilliantly before... But, yeah, then the we've got, but, but then we've got an, an, an off form Edward mm. and we've got an unfit Griffiths mm. and we're missing Julian in mm. that back three. Mm. You, you, I think we're missing El Hamid down that right hand side. Mm. I, 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 I really do. He, he was brilliant in the uh, European games last season. He was. He, he's, he's, he seems to. Well, I guess he's, he's, like, he's an experienced player. He's he, like 29. Again, it's difficult to see past the team that finished tonight's game, apart from Ayeti for Kamala mm. up uh. top. Um, what do you do with the problem which is Shane Duffy? What do you do with the question which is Shane There's Duffy? There's nothing you really can do apart from bringing an inexperienced Stephen Welsh. Until, I don't know when Beaton and El Hamid come back for their quarantine. El Hamid got us quite late into the international break, so I imagine he'll be a bit later. Well, I think he says uh, during the week that it was, a, it was 11 days on Thursday there. Hmm. But, again, we've got to have a look at it, but these players are going to be rigorously tested because hmm. tested the, the, every day, the, 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 the two Israeli players have seemingly been hit quite hard with, with, the, with the illness hmm. where they're, they're, su- they're suffering from quite a bit of fatigue. Must be the same with Edward as well. Well, Edward's everything's been kind of hushed, hushed, kept mm-hmm. up, kept secret. Mm-hmm. Eh? Well, he's not been here in the last two games, so. Aye, I, 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 I think that says it all. <sighs> Aberdeen's a massive, massive game, mm-hmm. and you've got to sometimes breathe in these challenges. You've got to take these challenges on, and Lennon's maybe got to. Have a look over the next couple of days. What, what does he need to do with his team? Does this team need a arm around the shoulder or does it need a kick up the butt? Mm. And he's got to have a look at his squad and see what players we need. We're, we're now we're now basically in that corner, and mm. we're, we're going to need to come out come out fighting. And, 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 and I'm including the, the coaching staff in that as well. They've they've got to start coming up with answers mm. extremely quickly, or this season will spiral out of control. For everybody. Aberdeen will only be a pushover here. They took us nah. right to the limit. Chris Iyer had to score a brilliant finish right at the death to win it last time we were at Pitodre. And that's when we were on form. Mm-hmm. What's an uh, off-form Celtic? So that's a time of need going to play like. Back-to-back defeats. Rangers to AC Milan. Two massive games. We've uh, failed in both of them. Was there enough in that second half, Kevin, to give you some positivity that Sunday is the day that we, we start to turn a corner. I mean, Ryan Christie has got to start. Um, there's a question mark for me over Scott Brown starting. Duffy's going to start because we have no other options uh, in that position. Good point by James. When does El Hamid and Beaton come back? We know that both of them suffered pretty badly from the effects of the virus. 
Edward, we, we have no update on Edward, but it looks as though Julien's more of a long-term injury than we expected. Uh, Duffy's going to have to start, but do we change the shape? The three at the back didn't work against Rangers, didn't work really against Milan until we changed it. So we do, do we change it, or can we dismantle teams like Aberdeen using the three at the back? Let's have a look. The last time we went to Pataudry, we were struggling, it was mm. one each. And the time before that, we destroyed them. We, we destroyed them, but we were struggling, it was one each. And Christopher Ayer scored that goal mm. for right back because we went to a back four. We actually mm-hmm. started at a back yeah. three and we changed to a back four. Um, I think we need to... I think the coaching staff will be seriously considering binning the back three until Julian yeah. comes back. We should. I think they'll be sitting in their office just now or whatever they're doing and they will be seriously considering ditching the back three and any plans that they'll be making for Sunday will they have a back three it'll be a back four what they do in front I would like to see them going I would like to see I'd go Christy Mo- Moya yeah. aye no, that's what I would go I would go they, they, they seem to have energy but then again Moy's been hit or miss mm. so there's made there's made there's made there's, there's more questions did I get what I wanted and can I see us kicking on from kicking on on Sunday no I never saw enough and I, and I, and I, I want to get proved wrong I really do want to get proved wrong but I never saw enough tonight to make me think that we're over this slump I think Duffy could maybe get back to his best against Aberdeen because the two games that he's had poor performances are against Rangers who were, they were good on the day, you can't deny that, and against AC Milan who are top of Serie A when he was playing, when Duffy was playing against St Johnson, Ross County, he was playing brilliantly and he was scoring goals for fun as well, we can't just completely gloss out them. I think he could come back to his best against Aberdeen. Well, we move on to the Aberdeen game. Obviously, there will be far more uh, discussion about uh, the result this evening and we'll be back at 12.30 tomorrow. Uh, one point is we didn't see Turnbull tonight. Disappointed in that? Uh, we were needing creativity. I, I thought Turnbull should have been on instead of Rogic. But obviously, I was shut up because Rogic was fantastic. But Turnbull, I think he could have been on the park there. Maybe instead of Greg Taylor. I think we were disappointed it wasn't there, but then when you actually see the way the subs performed, we can actually we can we can't be too unhappy. We can be too unhappy. We can maybe give the, the Lennon and the coaching staff point, credit yeah. that they made the right substitutions. Joe Fulham uh, makes the point on YouTube that I look a bit down at Europe as a side show. It's nothing to do with that, Joe. Uh, I've spent half the evening uh, trying to moderate the comments coming in from Rangers fans. So, yes, I'm working on that as we speak. I'm aware of the types of comment coming in and every user that makes comments uh, in that vein are being blocked. So I'm taking uh, your comment seriously when you're reporting that. So, yeah, and uh, Russell Boyce is giving you the big... Uh, um, heads up, James, that you have got good knowledge. Your knowledge is superb tonight. So there's your debut. Uh, European debut for Welsh. I think um, I was surprised that Welsh kept his position, but you know, Lenny obviously was determined to keep the three at the back, Kevin. I think that was a wrong decision. Um, I think when we changed it, when we made the, the, the changes in the second half, and we saw the introduction, particularly of Ryan Christie, we saw an improved performance. Why didn't Ryan Christie start? Surely. It wasn't due to a lack of fitness. You only missed one game for Celtic. So, yeah, he has been obviously having to isolate. But he, for me, is a creative force. He needs to start on Sunday. We need to change the formation at the back. I have got concerns about Duffy. We're going to continue to have to play him until one of the other centre-halves is back. Does he need a rest after playing so many games since he came up to Scotland? Um, a lot of Celtic fans are now doubting that he was the man for the job. So, loads to discuss between now and Sunday um, and we will be back tomorrow at 12.30 so thank you everybody for getting involved tonight it's been a disappointing game disappointing result some positives from the second half and hopefully we can uh, put it right on Sunday uh, all that's left for me to say is to yourself Kevin Graham and to James McKenzie making your debut hopefully you'll be back thank you for joining me on a Celtic State of Mind thanks Paul thanks, thanks everybody cheers Paul 